so up to this we have just uh, discussed the dependence of, uh, of, of flame speed on different uh, parameters like uh, adiabatic flame temperature of the of the uh, fuel or mixture of the of the pressure on on um, uh, things like thermal uh, on on like uh, uh, transfer properties but uh, now we can uh, we are ready to look into the chemical structure of flames so in this uh, topic what we'll discuss is that the thing that we want to uh, want to discuss is that uh, so far we have essentially talked about a uh, about an idealized flame structure where we considered a preheat zone and a reaction zone and the preheat zone does not contain any reactions and then the reaction zone which occurs in a very thin layer at very high temperature so this was the assumption of the uh, of the of the flame uh, structure uh, for analysis that we have done but now we'll show that we'll consider a case where um, we'll show that this idealization is uh, is really a simplification and the actual flame structure might be more complex than what we have uh, what we have uh, um, just seen so okay so uh, so now this is the uh, thing that uh, we'll go into this uh, the difference between the asymptotic versus chemical structure so uh, as we just discussed that the asymptotic uh, structure is a broad uh, it's, it is uh, it has a broad convective diffusive region and it has a non reactive region uh, uh, so most part of the flame is in the asymptotic view the most part of the flame is essentially non reactive so it's only within the narrow diffusive reactive zone at the downstream end of the flame we have reactions okay and we considered this uh, as, a, as a result of the one step of overall reaction and uh, which has got very uh, high activation energy and uh, which results in a very localized heat release and localized reactions okay and um, uh, we have also considered not uh, we have not considered chemical activation as such and we have considered if at all there is any chemical activation that is also due to the thermal uh, in nature and that is purely governed by the arrhenius kinetics because the reactions are promoted at high temperature okay but uh, in actual in in uh, when you consider a real um, flame structure with detailed chemistry of course we can consider that so far we have con considered detailed chemistry only in the in the framework of a homogeneous mixture right so and that's in the that went into this uh, kinetics classes and the oxidation mechanism of fuels so where all our discussions was actually focused or concentrated in the for a homogeneous reactor and the difference between a homogeneous reactor and a flame is that in flame you have got strong thermal uh, you have got strong diffusion going on okay strong diffusion of heat strong diffusion of species mm, going on so the flame is different from a homogeneous reactor in the fact that there are strong transport phenomena involved so what happens when the transport phenomena involved is basically what we have to consider is that we here in this we will essentially combine our understanding of the oxidation mechanism of fuels and chemical kinetics with the just concluded uh, 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 asymptotic analysis or this uh, uh, high activation energy small uh, thin reaction zone analysis but this is a very key step to i mean uh, this is a very important and subtle the fact is that um, yes our once uh, our one step um, high activation energy theory is very important because it gives a very good idea of what the flame speed or the laminar flame speed will depend on it depends on temperature it depends on lewis number it depends on your um, your uh, uh, zeldovich number etc and uh, we find from experiments that those are actually right so the analysis is correct to some extent it predicts many of the things correctly but at the same time if you are doing if you want to understand how exactly the the conversion of this uh, of this uh, of this uh, of this fuel molecules uh, uh, fuel into into uh, fuel and uh, oxidizer how the conversion of these happen into into products and uh, how does that conversion release the heat then we have to consider the detailed reaction mechanism and do the analysis of this laminar 1d laminar premix flame with this detailed reaction mechanism and that will tell us a wealth of information about how the reactions are actually participating and how the reactions are actually participating in con in cognizance with the transport phenomena with the with the mm, with the different uh, diffusion pro processes and how they change the flame structure okay and how the flame change the flame structure from the ideal behavior so this is a very very important part and this is very important to understand real combustion processes which happens in an engine even though this we are doing this for a one step flame we can do this analysis for a, a complicated flames that exist in an engine and uh, this will serve as a baseline for essentially doing that you see the whole purpose of this course is to is to not uh, analyze the combustion we'll do, though we will do that though, but the whole purpose of the whole in the whole course we are not analyzing 
combustion phenomena inside an engine. We are preparing ourselves, we are preparing our tools, and we are preparing our knowledge or we are preparing our viewpoints which will enable us to understand that ok. So, that is very important. So, which will and once we understand that we will be able to design this. So, uh, so that is very important this is how scientific progress happens. So, you analyze uh, you take up a very complex problem and you remove its uh, uh, its uh, its all its uh, surrounding um, uh, external frills and it you go to the bare skeleton and then you try to analyze that ok. And then that is what we are doing we have uh, a, a complicated uh, a whole flame inside a combustion chamber is very complex. So, we are considering we can we can consider that we are considering pieces of that with uh, with certain idealization that it is locally planar, it is locally laminar and then we are analyzing that piece of that flame and we will see that here how actually the reaction um, how actually the fuel oxida uh, reacts with oxygen to basically get converted into products ok. So, uh, uh, that we did first mathematically. So, of course, when we did mathematically we have to uh, we have to um, uh, consider uh, uh, basically an idealization of one step chemistry and certain other idealizations. But now when you do that with the detail phenomena you solve for everything essentially and uh, you will find that how this uh, what are the similarities and what are the differences between the asymptotic structure and the actual chemical structure. But this is very important ok. So, uh, what we find is that the chemical structure if you just highlight these points we find that that is a termination reaction is temperature insensitive ok. Now, this is uh, from our knowledge in um, the, the from the from the reaction mechanism oxidation mechanism of fuels we find that temperature is uh, we find the termination reaction is temperature insensitive why because its activation energy is essentially 0. So, uh, temperature uh, reaction becomes more and more sensitive uh, when its activation energy increases ok as we have seen later uh, seen, seen in the previous uh, kinetic class. Um, and it can occur in upstream diffusive zone ok and as a result uh, reactions, uh, reactions can take place throughout the entire flame structure. So, when a reaction has an activation energy to be very small it does not there is no at all no requirement that it will only happen at uh, very high temperature ok. So, uh, this uh, certain reactions of course, there are many other reactions like the branching reactions have a very high activation energy and those are excited or those parties or those occur at uh, large rates only when the temperature is small, but that does not mean all reactions have a, a large activation energy and that is where the very good example of this is the termination reaction which is temperature insensitive and it can occur in the upstream diffusive zone and reactions can take place throughout the entire flame structure. And this termination reactions can be highly exothermic ok. Uh, for example, this reaction you will see that H plus O2 plus M this three body termination reaction H O2 plus, plus M uh, is very highly exothermic and there will be substantial heat release in the preheat zone ok. Now, chemical activation through radicals produced at downstream high temperature uh, uh, produced at downstream high temperature and, and that back diffuse to the preheat zone. So, you see that in this termination reaction H plus O2 plus M going to H O2 plus M this most important key thing is this H radical. So, the you need this to termination reaction to occur and for this to release a substantial amount of heat you need this H radical presence. So, this H radical is a very key element here is a very key uh, atom here and this presence uh, will control the reactions. But uh, the thing is that in a in a homogeneous reactor the H radical um, has to be produced simultaneously um, uh, to, to, to attack this oxygen molecule. But here what can happen is that even if it produces being produced later in a downstream region ok, this downstream region H that is produced can back diffuse and come up and uh, react with an upstream oxygen molecule and to form this HO2 plus M and release a substantial amount of heat. So, that, that's it, that is what is different when you have diffusion processes it couples you uh, this, this uh, earlier molecules with the later molecules and can still enable you to have the reactions between them through the process of diffusion. Okay, so, uh, in homogeneous systems uh, this uh, radicals are uh, produced by original fuel oxidizer species. So, the initiation reaction for a for a flame and for a hydrogen uh, for a for a homogeneous system can be very different. So, that is what makes this chemical structure understanding very important. So, premixed uh, hydrogen air flame if you consider the diffusive structure. So, this is once again the flame uh, uh, this is the flame this is in uh, infinite uh, doubly infinite domain ok. This is stabilized uh, so uh, 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 and here you have a uh, uh, fuel plus ox air uh, uh, mixture coming the fuel is hydrogen and the air is uh, oxygen plus nitrogen um, uh, that is air 21 percent and 79 percent and this is uh, high temperature products ok. So, now 
this um, uh, this high temperature um, um, uh, this uh, 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 this uh, high temperature products are uh, uh, formed and then washed out. So, this is the 1 D uh, premixed uh, hydrogen air flame and this is the diffusive structure. You see that uh, now this uh, this is the flame location we can say essentially this is the from here to here is our um, is our flame. Okay, so, uh, we can consider this from here to here as our flame location and uh, this is the, the structure on uh, we have plot on this uh, on this double y axis uh, figure we plot um, on the left hand sides we plot the mole fraction of different species of hydrogen and oxygen and water and on the right hand side we plot the, uh, the temperature and this is a hydrogen air stoichiometric hydrogen air flame at a pressure of 1 atmosphere. Okay. And so, the hydrogen and oxygen comes, um, uh, so nitrogen is not plotted for obvious reasons and then it uh, of course, it is consumed and then it goes down. Okay. But you see that this uh, consumption has a unique behavior and of course, water is produced at the end of all the reactions and the temperature increases like this. So, this dotted line represents temperature, but you see that once immediately the, the thing that uh, is interesting is that uh, if you consider a definition for thickness that is uh, which is inverse of the of the gradient uh, essentially and uh, uh, on the numerator we have the difference between the upstream and the downstream or something like that. You see that the hydrogen has a much uh, thicker um, thickness uh, is uh, the hydrogen um, uh, depletion zone is much thicker in comparison to the oxygen and this is because the hydrogen has a higher diffusivity as a result its gradient is smaller. Okay. So, um, this as a result of this the hydrogen has a um, uh, uh, the the high diffusivity uh, causes this um, uh, this uh, uh, thing to have a, um, a thicker uh, broader region and in comparison to the oxygen this bump actually comes from the fact that uh, this hydrogen uh, depletes uh, very rapidly okay and uh, it has nothing to do with any chemistry effects okay so um, yes uh, hydrogen diffusion layer is thicker than those of oxygen and heat because of its high diffusivity and the rapid reduction in hydrogen con con concentration causes a bump in the mole fraction of oxygen this is not physical just a definition on mole basis all right so now now we come into the flame structure where we look into the different kind of chain branching reactions and the different things so the first thing that comes into the mind is that you see the so, this is the thing. So, the first uh, active species that comes up is essentially this H O 2. Okay. So, in this whole thing the first radicals that is formed is that of H O 2 among the all the radicals H O H O H 2 O 2 etcetera everything. Okay. So, the where then the question is that where does H O 2 come from? Okay. So, uh, this uh, is uh, the to answer this uh, because we go into before we answer this thing we go into essentially analyze the overall production and consumption rate of different species. We see that this hydrogen production rate, uh, this hydrogen atom which is the most important uh, active radical actually, you see this is a shape like this. Okay. So, here uh, we have first uh, consumption of hydrogen, okay. we have first uh, consumption of uh, hydrogen atoms and then it has a increase in the production of hydrogen atoms. Okay. So, uh, this uh, and this hydrogen uh, 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 consumption essentially coincides with the uh, production of H O 2. So, somehow hydrogen consumption and H O 2 are being related are related through some reactions. Okay. So, first let us understand uh, that how uh, H is produced. To understand how H is produced uh, this is by this uh, two mechanisms uh, two reactions H is produced. H 2 that is the hydrogen fuel is attacked by the oxygen atoms and it produces O H plus H. And of course, H 2 is also attacked by hydroxyl atom uh, hydroxyl molecule O H and it produces H O 2 and H and then this hydrogen which is consumed here okay, uh, which is which is formed here and that shows up as this large uh, peak of hydrogen. But once this is uh, hydrogen atom and once this is formed it can actually back diffuse. Okay. So, once it back diffuses now this termination reaction can happen that is this H plus O 2 plus M can go to H O 2 plus M and uh, which essentially forms this uh, which results in the consumption of hydrogen. So, that is why first we have a consumption of H atom and then we have a production of H atom and that gives rise to this unique structure. Okay, but this uh, uh, this you see this uh, this back diffusion process is very very critical because once this goes back diffuses it can now react with oxygen to form N and H O two plus M, and this reaction is extremely exothermic. Okay, 
and uh, uh, this reaction is exothermic and that is a result of which you have temperature release, uh, you have a lot of heat release in low temperature upstream regions which is not possible otherwise. In a normal hydrogen oxygen homogeneous system you will have temperature high temperature at a reasonably higher temperature not in this uh, not in uh, this uh, um, uh, this, uh, this manner ok. Uh, this is because in a homogeneous system your initiation reaction uh, that is a formation of H <coughs> is through this H2 plus O2 goes to H2 plus H. So, this is uh, the contrast between a flame structure and a homogeneous structure. So, you see that combustion is not only about reactions, it is also about transport properties combined with reactions. So, this is a very classic example of this. Uh, we have seen in the Zeldovich channel, the Frank Kaminitsky analysis also that transport and, and reactions are equally important because F0 square is F0 that is a burning flux is essentially the geometric mean of, of your reaction and transport properties that is your thermal diffusivity and the reaction rate. Here you see how this different transport that is a back diffusion of H radical or upstream uh, causes this uh, termination reaction to, uh, to, uh, to pick up at a low temperature ok. And um, uh, it can consume the hydrogen and release a lot of heat and that changes the overall flame structure itself. And later you will see that when it comes to turbulence, the turbulence also changes the flow and of course, you have seen previously the stretch, um, it can cause stretch and that can again changes the flow structure. So, combustion is having, having is about different numerous reactions combined with transport combined with flow properties at uh, different scales. Uh, so, that is the most interesting thing about combustion. Okay. So, now uh, uh, we see that uh, water is also generated through the entire zone because this is the uh, thing about water. Okay. So, now this uh, mm, uh, going back to the thermal structure, th this was the chain branching structure, you see that the major exothermic reactions essentially is uh, this one mm, that is the H plus O2 plus M goes to HO2 plus M and also the hydrogen production layer OH plus H2 goes to HO2 plus H. And this, uh, this is uh, here your different heat release rate contribution, um, uh, this is this is the uh, uh, heat release rate you see. Uh, this is the heat release rate uh, uh, thing and that the total total contribution by different reactions is this one that is this coincides almost entirely this is the overall uh, heat release uh, rate this dotted line you see and that coincides very well almost with this this termination reaction H plus O2 plus M uh, going to HO2 plus M on near the upstream regions whereas near the downstream region it uh, coincides well with this reaction so H plus H2 going to H2O plus H. So, in the upstream region this is the major contribution of heat release and in the downstream region this one is the in the upstream region this is the consider, um, uh, contributor of heat release and in the downstream region uh, this is the major uh, contributor of uh, heat release. So, if you plot the heat release rate with temperature you see that this heat this rate essentially peaks at a very uh, low temperature of about say like uh, 700 to 800 Kelvin. Mm, this is the heat release rate, this dotted line, and this is the temperature, ok. And uh, it peaks at a uh, temperature of about 800, 700, 800 Kelvin, and uh, which is uh, very in contrast with the all the analysis that we have done uh, so far, that is um, um, where we have assumed that large activation energy um, causes the heat release to happen at large temperature. But you see here in this particular case, heat release comes from a reaction which has got very low activation energy almost 0. So, as a result of that the heat release comes in low temperature and uh, it changes the whole flame structure. But this of course, uh, hydrogen which is a little bit exceptional case, the hydro for more, most hydrocarbon your heat release rate indeed occurs at higher temperature and um, through the C oxidation route. And, uh, uh, it is not um, in there with this uh, the asymptotic analysis and this the, uh, the uh, of this uh, uh, analysis of this uh, mm, high activation energy that we have done so far holds in a better um, holds in a better manner ok. So, here the major endothermic reaction is this H plus O to going to H plus O which is essentially the chain branching uh, which is a major branching step and uh, it helps the release to uh, the reactions to proceed further. And uh, here uh, the maximum heat release rate as we have said occurs at about 800 Kelvin and that is the hallmark of this uh, H, uh, H plus O 2 plus M and the H 2 plus M uh, the 3 body termination reaction. Okay, and uh, of course, 30 percent of heat release is in hydrogen, heat released in hydrogen consumption layer at about 30 at about uh, 1000 Kelvin. Okay, so, this is uh, chemical activation as indicated by the maximum production of H uh, occurs at around 1400 uh, Kelvin. Uh, so, this is also that is uh, this, this one, uh, this, this one corresponds to about 1400 Kelvin, that is what uh, this is what I want to say here. 
So, uh, with that uh, this uh, um, this part of the analysis of the laminar flames and uh, laminar flame structure, uh, laminar premix flame and laminar premix flame structure uh, is uh, complete. And um, of course, uh, you might think that why did we uh, spend so much time on laminar flame analysis. The reason once again uh, to reiterate is that laminar flames are essentially units of turbulent flames. We can only understand turbulent flames which happens in engines well only if you understand the laminar flame behavior the response that is a laminar flame speed, laminar flame structure on non, non premix flame structure mm, well um, and these are basically units of a much bigger thing. So, only when you understand the units well you can you, uh, you all only when you understand the building blocks well you can use those to construct a big building uh, which is uh, which is essentially the goal of this course to understand combustion in air breathing aero engines. So, with that next we will proceed to um, so all this analysis that we did for laminar flames for non premix uh, for, for laminar flames whether it is non premix flames whether it is for droplet combustion whether it is for uh, whether it is for uh, laminar premix flames these are all for um, uh, these are uh, 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 these are all for steady analysis right. So, everything is steady ok. Uh, uh, so, next we will go into like unsteady phenomena where uh, we will look into ignition and extinction and uh, we will also see uh, uh, we will also sometimes we will do a steady analysis to see whether it is possible to ignite or extinguish a given mixture without going into how they can be ignited or extinguished. Mm, uh, so, uh, uh, that will be taken up in next class. So, until then goodbye, thank you.